Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis. Today we're going to be looking at the 300 gallon reef and talk about the biggest mistakes and regrets that I have with this display tank. Now, of course, there are other tanks you guys saw as walking in that are attached to the 300 gallon reef. We'll save that for a later video. So first things first, if you're new to the channel, please check out the overhaul series that I did a couple months ago where I removed 20 colonies from this main display. Uh, you guys can really see what it looked like before I overhauled and uh, the, the things that I talk about in this video really have to do with that overhaul and why it had to happen. So first things first, my biggest regret in this setup is the pillars. Now don't get me wrong, I really like the pillar look. That's the problem. I like the look of it while things are doing well, growing in, filling in, and everybody's happy, including the fish and coral. But that doesn't last forever, it just doesn't. So the pillars, as I usually keep them, are small based and then the arms come out and then it, the corals grow on it and they look like they're just kind of floating in the middle of the tank. I really like that look. I just, I just something I brought over from the 125, I really like the way it looks, but it just doesn't work out. It's not a long-term success rockscape, at least for Acropora and the corals that I keep. At least for me, it's not for long-term. Uh, maybe one and a half, two years max, depending on how fast you grow coral, you're going to be fine. But for me, about a year and a half in, these colonies were killing each other, straight up destroying it. You guys remember the big WWC yellow tip here? Everything underneath was pretty much dead. Uh, and that's not the only situation. We had a big Monte Cap. Just go check out that video series of the overhaul and you get exactly an idea of what I'm talking about. Anyway, pillars are great because if you like the floating look without having to actually make a floating aquascape, it's really nice. But long-term success, it's not going to work out, at least not for me. So the biggest issue with the pillars is the shading. Shading is a huge problem. No matter what you do, a colony is going to get so big that things underneath it are going to die. They're just going to. There's, there's really nothing you can do about it with pillars. Now, if you have another aquascape, kind of like I have over here with uh, the 40 gallon, just kind of trying this out, it's more spread out where the colonies can grow and get big, but not necessarily shade anything out underneath them until they get really big, and that can be controlled through fragging. When it comes to pillars, there's not really much you can do. Uh, depending on where you put the coral, which we'll talk about here in a second, you're really going to have to get in there and cut it quite often, which just defeats the whole purpose of growing out colonies if you have to sit there and cut them all the time. Now, moving over to coral placement, that was another mistake that I made early on. Again, putting like this WWC, which I, I put a little bit of it down here, which was originally the big one up here that was killing everything, that coral should have stayed low in the first place. And that's where the research on what your coral is going to look like, how it's going to grow, that's why it's important to look those things up before you purchase a coral or at least after you purchase it, Google it, get an idea of what it looks like, and then place it in your tank based on that. At least at least do that. Uh, because we have these big stags up here, these guys, no problem. It doesn't really shade anything out underneath because of the openness of the staghorn. But if I was to go ahead and take this uh, plating $500 F-Low and put it up here, it would shade everything out underneath. That's why it's kind of over here by itself. So I got lucky with that and placing that early on. But coral placement was something I really messed up on, and that's why... I removed 20 colonies from this display and essentially started my tank over, which sucks. You know, two years in, starting the whole system over, just replacing with little bitty frags. I mean, that's not something I wanted to do, but I really didn't have any choice. Uh, the, cor the coral was growing so big that the fish aggression was a huge problem. There wasn't enough room to swim. And then all the shading, all the STN or slow tissue necrosis, all the death that was happening in here because of the coral placement and the growth. I had to I had to just I had to take a bunch of stuff out. So do your research, figure out how the coral's going to grow, and then place that in the tank based on how it's gonna grow. Stay away from rock stay away from pillars unless you know you're you know jumping from lease to lease and you only really live at an apartment for a year or two, then yeah, the pillar look is probably fine. But if you're setting up a tank, uh, like the next one that we build. It's going to be my forever tank, my forever, my forever system. Uh, that has to be built in a way that's going to allow long-term success. So pillars will be not even close to an option. Not really sure exactly what I'm going to do yet. Uh, just going to get inside the tank. And again, it's it's going to be a 1,000. So I'm going to get in the tank and I'm going to build what I what I build and see how it turns out and then uh, hope for the best. But I know for a fact that pillars will no longer be uh, part of my theme. Unfortunately, that's just kind of how it is. Now, the next thing that I regret is fish selection. Uh, only one fish in particular, and she's the nicest fish that I have. It's the big flamingi tang. This girl right here. Uh, she grows too fast. Uh, she's about a foot now. We're pretty close to it, and uh, it's only been two years. If you guys remember that video where I was taking the glue out of the mouth of a fish, 
that's that fish when she was like this big. So that wasn't too long ago. Now she has the potential of getting about two feet and unfortunately she will not be going with me to the new build. Um, I just, it's, I just don't think it's going to work out. Uh, even though it's a 1000, it's going to get full of coral. And, I, and she is one of the main contributors to why I have chunks of coral on the bottom of my tank. She's just a bullheaded fish and gets in there and, and she doesn't necessarily get scared. She's just like, oh, a colony's in my way. Let me go ahead and make some room. And uh, so the Flamingi tangs or any tangs that have the ability to get upwards of two feet long, need to stay away from them, regardless of the size of your system, because I mean, imagine the size of the tank that you need or how empty that tank has to be to support this fish at two feet long. I mean, the tank is two feet wide. I mean, just imagine the space that's required. It's, ultimately, it's not fair to have a fish that's two feet long, even in a 1,000, because it's just it's just not enough swim room. Swim room. So she's going to go to an aquarium. I'm going to donate her before we move, and uh, she'll be in a much bigger setup, and she can be happy there. Now, other than that, fish selection's been fine. Uh, you guys know that I had Reggie, the snowflake eel, that passed away, unfortunately. Um, I, I had no problems with him. He was really rough on my rock structures because of how big he was and how he got in between the rock structures and moved it around this, this uh, rock structure in particular. Eels, I guess, would be fine as long as your rock structure is secure, but understand that they're going to get really big um, and they're going to take up a lot of room, at least depending on the eel. You know, some eels stay relatively small. You just kind of got to do your research on that. Um, and Reggie was getting a pretty big and uh, you know doing some damage to the rock structure so that's something you might want to consider down the road um, the next thing that I regret in this setup is encrusting Montipora and zoanthids <laughs> I am not happy with them the zoas just take over everything I mean these guys are just mowing down corals I mean that's just I mean look at this I mean rest in peace Acropora I mean he's still alive believe it or not but he's getting destroyed by zoas so, uh, yeah, lesson learned. Not going to be adding any Zoas to my future stick tank. Um, encrusting Montipora is a huge problem as well. Uh, stuff over here, uh, all this stuff here was running down rampant, just taking out colonies. And I went in there with the Dremel tool and took out a lot of that. You guys remember the encrusting uh, purple Montipora? That thing was a huge pain. Finally had to go in there with the Dremel and take care of it. Um, you'd be surprised what a Dremel will do uh, when you need it to work in your uh, display tank. So... Uh, encrusting Montipora, ix that. Uh, Zoa's not going to do that anymore um, because we're looking at long term success, right? We're looking at something that uh, you know you want forever and you're not going to stop the growth of an encrusting Monty. You can manage the growth of a bird's nest or even a staghorn. You can manage that because it's not going to take over the whole rock structure. But we have Zoa's and stuff like that. They're eventually going to take over everything and that's something that you might want to consider uh, not adding to your system if you want long term uh, success with the tank or at least having the tank up for several years without running into issues. Now of course you can always uh, Dremel them off. That's what I did with this rock structure. I had a whole bunch of pallies went in there with the Dremel and just buzzed them off. There's a little bit there uh, left over but nothing crazy. Uh, the next thing that I will not be doing in my next setup is adding any LPS. Now, I will be setting up an entire tank for this Lobo that I got from Brian, my buddy, uh, who passed away. Uh, I got that five years ago as just a little chunk right here, just a little bitty chunk, and you can see that thing's massive. It's it's at least, I don't know, 15, 16 inches across in diameter. It's pretty massive. Um, but the issue that I mentioned before is that LPS, even after quarantining this coral, I still got vermented snails, even after quarantining it. I still got them. I didn't see any on the on the uh, base of it, again, after quarantine, but still there was maybe a micro baby fermented snail in there one way or another, and I ended up getting them. Now, that's, that's a problem. Like, fermented snails don't necessarily bother my coral. It's not something that I have to worry about when I ship out, but it's an eyesore, and it's a huge pain in the butt, and it's not going to be acceptable in the new setup. So I'm going to nix that issue altogether. There won't be any LPS in my new setup. Nowhere because even after quarantining, I still got them. So that's that's a problem. I don't I don't like that. That's not something that I'm gonna deal with. If if for whatever reason I need to put this Lobo in the new tank, that thing's gonna be in quarantine for probably six months to a year because I can't play any games. I need to make sure that I don't get them because all it takes is one, one vermintus snail, and then you're gonna have them everywhere. That's just kind of how it is. Now I am uh, getting close to 10 minute mark, so I'm gonna restart the video because uh, it's gonna shut off on me. All right, so we're back. Uh, the Lobo, love that thing. It will have its own setup, its own tank, and it will live on forever, hopefully. But other than that, 
no LPS. Not going to do it. Not taking the risk. Um, honestly, not an LPS fan. Uh, I mean, they're taking up room that could be used for something else. So, uh, moving around here. Uh, they're, they're taking up room that could, you know, I could put acros there, I could put something else there. And again, this is personal preference, guys. This isn't, you know, something that me, everybody has to do who watches my channel. Everybody has their own preferences. For me, for long-term success and what I want for a business, uh, the things that I'm mentioning are a must. I can't really bend on them because I'm seeing the lessons learned. And that's what's really good about this setup. Not only did I learn a lot about the business, uh, creating the business, but I learned some things that I will not do for my final build. And I'm, I'm sure... On the new setup, I'm going to figure out things that I didn't know about this setup. And, uh, you know, we'll have to fix them then because there is no other build. At least not that I, I'm aware of at the moment. You never know. You know, who knows what the future holds. But, uh, yeah, so, overall, I love the setup. I really do. I, I'm grateful for uh, what it provides. I'm grateful for uh, everything that I'm able to do with it. And, uh, you know, just what it's able to do for me. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. I don't really have any other major upgrade or uh, regrets or mistakes other than what I mentioned previously. Of course, the um, filtration is good. It works out great. Uh, no problems with that. And, uh, yeah, I can't I can't really complain too much. So, uh, yeah, that's about it for the video. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I mean, I just... Nothing. I mean, I ain't got nothing. It's almost perfect. <laughs> no, no, not even close. But... Uh, it is a stepping stone to bigger and better things, and that's how I like to look at my reef tanks. Learn your lessons and understand that it won't be your last tank unless you decide that it's going to be your last tank. So other than that, that's about it for the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Any questions, let me know, and uh, I'll see you later. All right, peace.